If it was possible to combine two types of nebulae found in space, such as an emission-style nebula like the Ingle Nebula, with a reflection-type nebula such as the Pleiades Star Cluster, what would you expect the final result to be? Well, if you said anything like the Triffin Nebula, or if you liked the title of this video, then you'd be correct. And that's exactly what I'm going to be shooting tonight. The Triffid Nebula is a beautiful star-forming region in the constellation Sagittarius, and a fantastic example of a dual-style nebula. Actually, make that a triple-style nebula, as hinted by the name. The reason why the Triffid Nebula is so special is because it's not just an ionized hydrogen region like many of the nebulae in this night sky, and it's also not just a reflection nebulae like some of the other deep sky targets in the night sky. The Triffid Nebula is kind of a combination of the two, with ionized hydrogen in its main star-forming region, as well as beautiful blues reflected from many of the stars and outer gas expelled by the Triffid. My name is Noah, and tonight I'm going to be using my Smith cassegrain telescope to get an up-close view on the Triffid Nebula under this beautiful, crystal-clear, moonless August night. Now, for why I'm not set up in my usual spot in the backyard to photograph the Triffid Nebula, essentially the Triffid Nebula is just too low on my horizon, and I have a lot of obstructions to the south, and I cannot photograph the Triffid very clearly from my usual spot. I'm really counting on everything working tonight so I can get an awesome image of the Triffid Nebula, because even in this spot, I can only get about an hour to an hour and a half of good data on the Triffid. And where I'm set up right now, I don't have a lot of access to other nebulae in the night sky, as opposed to my other spot in the middle of the backyard. So let's talk a bit more about the Triffid Nebula. It was discovered in 1764 by Charles Messier, and today it's about 4,000 light years away from Earth, spanning about 21 light years across. The Triffid Nebula has many of these dark ridges or branches running through it, which really makes the nebula stand out, and it's one of the reasons why I'm shooting it in true color on this moonless night. Speaking of moonless nights, if you're having a hard time picking what deep sky target to shoot during a new moon, I always shoot broadband natural color during moonless nights because I just cannot compete with the moon with that natural true color of space. So when the moon's out, I recommend going with narrowband imaging and you can get lots of great detail on those HA regions or O3 regions. But when the moon's away, you can get some awesome natural nebula and star colors. As for tonight, I'll be sure to share with you guys how it goes. Hi everybody, it's late at night and I've already taken all my frames of the Triffid Nebula I'm able to capture tonight. Apologies for the abrupt transition from my earlier clips in the video to now. A lot of things went wrong during this imaging session, believe it or not. I'm really counting on everything working tonight, but I guess that's just normal in the astrophotography hobby. As I was working out one of the problems with my equipment, I saw a lovely little Perseid meteor out of the corner of my eye, which is always a nice touch. I seriously encourage everyone watching this YouTube video to go and watch the Geminids meteor shower coming up this December. The Geminids is arguably the best meteor shower of the year with the highest meteors per hour rate. And come on, seeing a meteor shower, especially in a dark sky area, is an awesome treat. Anyway, I'll see what I can salvage from the limited data I was able to capture on the Triffid Nebula. And I hope you all enjoyed this short little installment on the YouTube channel. I'll see you all in the next video and clear skies.